On one level, sure, you can just say it's a memory. But it is a personal gift from God. And it's a, a way for us to understand truly the Holy Spirit is active in our lives. When we read the Magnificat, we call it Magnificat. From Luke, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. When she goes to visit Mary, I mean, uh, Mary goes to visit Elizabeth, her cousin, Rodichka, and, 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 and finds out, wow, she knew about my pregnancy. Because Elizabeth says, from the moment you ears, your, your greeting hit my ears, I rejoiced with you. The baby was dancing in my womb. We often want to say certain things about how God is acting in our lives. That's our Magnificat. Not only is these memories how God acted in our lives in the past, because Mary talks about that herself, but these are ways for us to share with each other. They're not meant just for us. Some are, some are just for us, but some are meant to be shared. And when we share them, we are doing the work of the Holy Spirit. We are fulfilling the gift and what it was meant to be. It was meant to be shared by us. And Mary comes and she shares with Elizabeth what God has done. She is not worthy. Uh, who am I? I am a humble, lowly person. But look what God has done in my life. And so it's important to realize that God is asking us to share these moments, even though people say, wow, wow, she's bragging, you know. There's a, a little joke, anecdote, when a man who is 30 years old is a taxi driver <clears throat> and he wants to marry a Catholic woman, but he is not Catholic. And so he has many kvitok. He has, he has tickets for speeding and for not wearing seat belts and for going through red lights and for going through stop signs and staying out of the lane. He has lots of tickets. But he wants to marry this lady and he says to myself, I have gone to church with her for two years. Why don't I become Catholic? So he speaks to her. She says, great idea. They speak to the priest, wonderful. Well, here he is, 30 years old, and he must go to his first confession. Maybe you remember your first confession. And he goes to the confession and he says, Father, I've done this and this and this and this. And the priest says, whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. You must tell me how many times. How many times I've done this? Yes, you must tell me. Slugete oche. <laughs> I, I want to confess. I don't want to brag. So we know when people are bragging. But how is it that Mary tells us these wonderful things and it's not bragging? Because she says, who am I? I'm nothing. But look what God has done in my life. And we are called to do that in the same way. St. Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians, although if I should wish to boast, I would not be foolish, for I would be telling the truth. But I refrain so that no one may think more of me than what he sees in me or hears from me because of so many things I have to say. Three times I begged the Lord about this thorn in my flesh, this thorn in my flesh. Three times, I begged him to remove it. And he said, my grace is enough for you. Power 
is made perfect in weakness. So many of the memories we may want to throw away, some of them are the most dear memories that we actually have because their God was the most powerful in our lives. So that we don't talk about our greatness, but about God's greatness. And Mary shows us <clears throat> how to do that. So if someone seems like they're bragging, save them. Save them and saying, wow, look what God has done in your life. Look what God has done. Redirect. They're, sure, you know, you know, they're, they're bragging. And you can say, you know, be humble. <laughs> you can say, wow, look what God has done in your life. Praise be to God. It's a nice way of saying, oh, don't, you know, quit bragging. Uh, get a hold of yourself. You're not perfect. You're not, you know, God's gift to, to men. You're not God's gift to women. Come on. Um, encourage people to share what God has done in their life. Not what's great or terrific or wonderful, but especially what God has done in life. As we want to continue, I think it's the Holy Spirit that is behind all of these. I want you to remember <clears throat> a confession when you finally heard the priest say, after whatever you did, I forgive you. Maybe it was weighing on your heart for a long, long time. And to be able to say, you know, God, wow. That's a gift. It's from the Holy Spirit. I have been working, uh, certainly, uh, as was alluded, I think, by Pani Irena, uh, on a book, a beautiful, beautiful book, uh, about Our Lady of Guadalupe, the Guadalupe. And today, this is the reason why I chose December the 12th to, to honor her with this wonderful gathering. Um, just a little technical point. Mary, according to the lunar and solar calendars, she appeared to San Juan Diego on the longest night of the year, Naidoshi Nietzsche, the winter solstice. And so today we know that that should be the 20th, 21st of December. Why is her feast on the 12th? Tabu Juliansky calendar. There was a Julian calendar only. There was no Gregorian calendar at the time of her appearance. And that's why the 12th of December was at that year, the longest night of the year when she appeared. In the depths of darkness, she appeared. And so in the depths of the darkness, sometimes in our life, I want to read a little bit from the foreword of that book, which very soon will be published in Ukrainian. And uh, I want to really put a plug for that book. It's something very, very powerful to read. Uh, and Irena was there in Mexico with us to see it herself. She did a great, great work of translating it and then editing it five times because this was changed and this was changed and this was changed. And then at the last minute to get permission to publish the book, she had to take all the stuff that was given by the patriarch in Ukrainian and translate it to English so that we could get, she did so much, you have no idea. Anyway, Juan Diego is very concerned about his uncle. He's supposed to meet Mary. He says, I'm not going to go and see her. I must take of my care of my uncle who's dying. 
And in fact, when he must go to the city to get a priest to give communion and to confession, Mary is always on this mountain and Juan Diego says, I must avoid her. I must go away around on the other side of the mountain so that she doesn't stop me because I am in a hurry. When he explains all this, Mary says these beautiful words to her. Listen, put it into your heart, my youngest son, that whatever frightened you, what afflicted you is nothing. Do not let it disturb your face, your heart. Do not fear this sickness, nor any other sickness, nor any sharp or hurtful thing. Am I not here? I who have the honor to be your mother? Are you not in my shadow and under my protection? Am I not the source of your joy? Are you not in the hollow of my mantle, in the crossing of my arms? Do you need anything more? These profound words are what brings many things together for me as a Ukrainian, Redemptorist Bishop, having a devotion to the mother of perpetual help. When I pray this before the very famous world renowned icon of the mother of perpetual help, when I pray those words, it strikes me that these beautiful words are appropriate in several circumstances. Number one, in faith, I hear the Theotokos say those words to Jesus as a small little frightened boy, which that icon depicts. Jesus jumps in her arms and she says those words to him. Don't I have you here? Aren't you in the crossing of my arms under my protection? Am I not the source of your joy? She says those to Jesus as he's contemplating the sharp and hurtful things that the angels hold. Secondly, in faith, I hear her repeat them to Jesus, carrying his cross when her eyes meet with his. That's another time that we hear that and see that. In faith, I hear her say them to Jesus when he's dead in her arms at the Pieta, or when she said it to Juan Diego, number four. Or in faith, I hear her say them to me or to you. In faith, I hear her say those very same words to all of Ukraine. Am I not here? Am I not the source of your joy? Are you not in the hollow of my mantle? In fact, it's the Holy Spirit giving her these words. The Holy Spirit says to us, am I not here? Don't I have you? Am I not protecting you? But he says it through Mary. It's the Holy Spirit who said through Mary, the beautiful Magnificat to Elizabeth. And therefore, <clears throat> it is the Holy Spirit that wants to speak to other people through you when you share your Magnificat. God, as Holy Spirit, wants to give you the words and it's going to be something like, well, I remember when I was four. I remember when this happened. You know, God wants you to take these memories and now put them to use. Help others see that they are not alone in their misery. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to them. He wants to speak to them through you. And you get to share your Magnificat with that person, you may not even know how important it is for them to hear what you have to say because you think it's just your memory. <laughs> no, it may be, or really will be, what the Holy Spirit has wanted to say to this person for years and years, and it might come through you. As Mary said those words to Elizabeth, as the Gabriel, Archangel Gabriel, said those words. To Mary. So don't merely think it's your idea. Don't merely think it's your memory. Don't merely think it's your first. It's a gift from God. God wants to use that gift 
Not all of them, of course, you must discern, you must decide what to share and what not to share. But God wants to take those gifts that he's given you and it's, it's like a seed. They're seeds. To je zerno. Šuper bivaju v srtjah. And now you're going to share them and they're going to get water and they're going to bloom into a beautiful plant, a beautiful flower, a beautiful tree. Share your Magnificat. As Mary pondered what it meant when the angel came to her and said, you're going to give birth to Jesus. God is dwelling in you and he wants to be given birth by you. He wants you to give birth to him through your actions, through your words, when you share your Magnificat, what God has done in your life. Give glory to God through your Magnificat. I think I've done my 20 minutes, a little bit over. Slava is just a good school. Well, I don't even know what to say, Your Excellency, because um, I believe you've exceeded all our expectations. Um, this profound message was not just a teaching, but it was also a personal witness um, of God's presence and Mary's presence in your personal life. And I think that's what makes uh, this mission extremely touching and extremely special and um, planted seeds of this love and uh, faith and kindness in the hearts of our young people. And uh, I believe um, they will have a lot to think about and discern and, and preparation for the nativity of our Lord. <laughs> For, for this time and opportunity uh, to share it, this message with our young people. Uh, but don't hold your breath just right now because our young people have been given homework. Um, we, we have allocated time for questions and answers because I believe this is a great opportunity for young people for whom this gathering um, has been organized uh, to actually find answers for important questions um, regarding the nativity of our savior. And at this particular time, we will open this discussion panel. I would like to ask uh, all of you, um, our young participants, should you have any questions that have come up to your mind after Bishop's mission, uh, please send your questions to our chat and we are going, um, if obviously we have sufficient time, we are going to uh, present those questions to our speaker, uh, Bishop Brian, and to Father Ivan um, here today. Uh, we've had five questions prepared um, a priori before the, the meeting, and I would like to uh, basically find answers to those questions uh, that our young people have prepared. So I would like to call upon Nadia, uh, who is going to ask her first, very first question about Christmas. Uh, Nadika, you're on, I'm on mute, yeah, okay. Okay, so Your Excellency, uh, how do you prepare for Christmas through Advent? Thank you. Um, each year is a little different, you know, when you're small, you maybe gave up chocolate or, you know, uh, at your age now, you might say, I'm not going to have any alcohol or any sweets or whatever. Uh, but of course, we've also learned that we must do things positively. So it's not just about not doing something, it's about doing positively. Um, <clears throat> and I am in a situation where I have uh, been uh, both given a burden, but uh, a, a, an extreme joy to not only be uh, the eparch in Saskatoon, but also the administrator in Toronto. And um, one, I'm an extrovert, in case you didn't know. <laughs> I'm not an introvert. I don't really get joy from reading books. 
but I, I, I love people. And, and uh, again, if you look at it, this is a gift God gave me. You get energized by people. And so uh, I have tried to meet with as many as possible, even during COVID restrictions, uh, to, to let them know that they have a bishop here in Toronto as well. Uh, at some personal cost, um, I uh, look outside and it's nice weather. It's 20 below with blowing snow in Saskatoon and in Toronto, it's 10 above, 12 above. And I'd love to be going for a walk at the lake, but I'm on the phone with a priest. I'm on the phone with somebody. This group is arguing with this group. And so <clears throat> uh, it's, it's, it's not like uh, I'm putting out fires and look at me, it is, who am I? I remember when I was a little seminarian here in Toronto, and I thought so highly of, oh, the, the rectory across from the cathedral. And now I live there. I thought so highly of some of the very well, long-serving priests, very important people in the eparchy. And now I'm the bishop. And it's like, well, who am I? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a punk. <laughs> and yet, look what God has done. And so um, this preparation for Christmas this year is to be present, to try and be present. As I've said in my Christmas message, which I was just working on, it's about being Christ for somebody who needs to encounter Jesus. That's the best way for me to prepare and identify as much as I can with Mary and the gift of uh, being present. So uh, that's what I'm doing uh, to prepare for Lent uh, during uh, Polipuka, uh, during uh, this year for, for Christmas. Thank you, you're excellent. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, you're welcome, uh, Nadia, thank you. Uh, next question is from Katya. Just wait, I wanted to always do this. It's, it's cool, but I've never met somebody with the name Tiomko. <laughs> so <laughs> I blew a kiss. There we go. <laughs> I, I've never met a name uh, Tiomko. Okay, next. Uh, Katya, your question is next. Okay. Can you hear me, Katya? Yep. Um, how do we or do we celebrate Christmas with people that do not even acknowledge Christ as the Son of God? Are we spiritually proud? If we refuse to, are those celebrations redeemable? Say your question again, please. It was very good. It's just I was distracted by something. Go ahead. Say it again. How, how do we or do we celebrate Christmas with people that don't even acknowledge Christ as the Son of God? Are we spiritually proud if we refuse to? Are those celebrations redeemable? Um, how do you celebrate Christmas with a little child who doesn't know God? You love them. You love them. It, it's way better for someone to rejoice with you when they know your heart, when they know your difficulties, when they know what you've gone through. If you share you know, <clears throat> that uh, I'll just use this again. If, if, you, if you have a joy that your, you've got your, your parents have, uh, you have a new brother or sister. They, they just gave birth to a new child. Wow, that's great. You'd share that with your friends. And when they have brothers and sisters, they know what that means. That's great. But also when you share that someone has died or passed, you want them to be with you too. And when you share that and they understand that pain, it's great for someone else to understand. But there's also a love, as Jesus showed us on the cross, that we can love even though they don't understand, even though they don't get it. And when you are faced with that rejection or, you know, stop talking about that or... Uh, go tell someone, you know, we used to say in Canada here, here's 25 cents to you, tutti e you know, go phone somebody who cares, you know. <laughs> then you will be as close as can be with Jesus, who's standing with you every time you share. 
and you will tell him, look at this rejection. And he goes, I know. You may be rejected by a person, but you will never be as close to Jesus as when you share that immediate rejection with him. And he says, I know. I get it. Been there, done that. I know what rejection is. So what's the point here? The point is not to have a job, a project that I want to complete and so that I'm successful. That's nice. It's wonderful. It's good. But when, when we want to share a joy and when we want to share a deep sadness with somebody, it's not about being successful. It's about being alone or being with. And if that person is not with you, they don't understand you, whatever, you can immediately say to Jesus who dwells in your heart, I feel rejected. And he says, I know. I too was rejected. Thank you, Excellency. Uh, thank you, Katya, for your question. Um, and I would like to say thoughts from Father Ivan on the same question. Uh, Father Ivan, Ivan, could you please share your thoughts and ideas on, on that? So I'll do the flip side of what Bishop Brian, oh, can you hear me? Test one, two, three. The flip side of what Bishop Brian talked about, he stressed that if there's an unbeliever and they don't want to celebrate what you believe, um, the flip side is that it's an opportunity to share with them. So they might reject you, but on the other hand, they might actually listen. And it's not about trying to convert them. It's just sharing your faith, sharing your experience, sharing your beliefs. And, and we don't know if that will make sense to that person in this moment or in five years from now, or when they're on their deathbed. But if you can say something that says, I believe in Christmas, not because I get the best presents, but I believe in Christmas because this is about my eternal life. This is about um, connecting with the Jesus who does understand rejection. Um, and our comfort is in Jesus. Our joy is in Jesus and our sadness is in Jesus. And if you could demonstrate that with your actions in your life, that will be the loudest message you can say to an unbeliever. That's my thought. Thank you, Father Ivan, for a great addition. Um, we have a third question from Olenka Vaiskiv. Olenka, can you please do uh, the technical try? One, two, three. One, two, three. Perfect, you're on. So my question is, how, how do we handle estranged family members, uh, members that have just written us off and uh, or, or family tensions or Christmas parties where people get drunk? Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. And then Father Ivan. This is a uh, very difficult situation. Some of them maybe are easier. Some are extremely difficult. The family wants to have joy, uh, be safe, etc., And you have a person that you really want to love, but you hate what they're doing right now. And they're drunk and they're making, they're ruining everything, you know? And so I don't pretend that there's an easy answer. I don't pretend an easy answer. In fact, I'm reminded that Jesus says, and Mary tells us, you know, it, it, you can expect suffering. You can expect tragedy. One, you've got to be safe. Two, you know, you want to be there, but it's, it's not safe or it's, it's, it's very distasteful and it's ruining things. Uh, the first thing I always go back to is, God is with me. He knows what's happening. He hears me. He understands my heart. He understands my desire. 
He understands my longing, I wish. Ya docekayu, but it is what it is. And so to, to leave myself out there and to enter into an argument and to do all these things, that's your call. That's your call. But always start with, God is with me. I want to be Jesus in this case. I want to be God's voice. The Holy Spirit wants to speak through me right now. And so address the situation, the circumstance, with the Holy Spirit speaking through you and not just your anger or not your disgust or not even though you have all those things. Go through those emotions as much as you can with God. Know that he's with you. And then, as much as possible, ask God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do in this situation? You know, maybe I should be the one who's protecting my younger sibling because they're really having a terrible Christmas and somebody else is ruining it for them. And I should do something. And you feel called to do something. Remember, whatever you do, start with, what do you want me to do, God? What is your will for me in this situation? I don't know what's going to work. It changes. But be God. Because wherever God is present, he shows, he brings peace. Not some fancy thing I'm going to say, not some smart Alec uh, sentence or word, not some sharp or hurtful thing, not some, not, it's not me. What does God want me to bring to this situation? It might be as simple as be quiet and pray. It might be as simple as God wants to use me to show this other person how to deal with this person, okay, that's alcohol, how to deal with this person with love, even though they are not nice, they're swearing, they're drunk, they're saying bad things. How does God want to use me an example to others about being Jesus to a person who really doesn't care about others or who does and feels bad, but they have an addiction? or they're yelling, or they're having a fight. And we finally had Christmas and they're having a fight. Do, do we need this fight right now? I mean, really? This can't wait? Ask yourself, God, thank you for being with me. How do you want me to respond to the situation? Do you want me just to pray? Do you want me to pray and say something? Do you want me to pray and do something? Uh, rather than just jump in and react from our own emotions or our own history. Thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, Father Ivan. So the family feud thing, I think that you always have to be open to being the first one to apologize, to being the first one that takes a step closer to your estranged family member. Because lots of times it's just your, your both sides are very stubborn and nobody does the first move. But you have to make the first move, which is being vulnerable and which means taking a risk. And I think that's the way with Christ that you will move forward. And the sec I took those two questions as separate questions, Olenka. So... Um, the second one is about how do you experience time with people who are just going to get drunk? So I'll tell you one story. In my high school, 211 graduates and coming to graduation time and there's a whole bunch of parties and most of them are going to all get drunk. And my group of about 10 people, um, we had this, it's a silly thing, but it was awesome. Uh, we would get drunk on yellow lifesavers. Do you know what lifesavers are? It's a kind of a candy. You buy a little roll of candies and they're circles. 
and they're all, they come in all colors. So we would on purpose buy two or three packages of Lifesavers and only take the yellow ones. And it's just the candy. And it was just, it was, there's no drug, no alcohol, no anything. And we would have the best parties ever. And nobody was getting sick and it didn't cost much. And it was just awesome. So I always say we got drunk on yellow Lifesavers and uh, it was a respectful way to have a great time in my youth. So um, I, I don't mind when people drink, but when people get drunk, I, I back away. I don't want to be in the same room. One more story. Um, now I'm a military chaplain, and they taught us one rule that says, uh, always leave the party early. So imagine you're in a room, so me as a chaplain in a room full of soldiers and they're starting to drink and then I know it's going to get crazy. So I, whatever, I, I might make my warning to a few people. I might show some people that it's getting out of hand and then I'll leave. So that in the morning when the commanding officer says, Padre, what was going on last night? What was, what was all this mess about? I said, I don't know, sir. I left early. <laughs> so don't be in the middle of when you know it's going to be bad don't stay there that's it so i back away um i'm not going to convert those people to be non-drinkers that night while they're already drinking so i move away that's all and to, the, to the extent if you are protecting somebody or you are in charge of a younger person who can't help themselves take them with you, I guess. For sure. Don't, don't leave them in that situation so that later, you know, you left, you were safe, but now somebody else was remaining in danger without your help. So, yeah. Good point. Thank you. Thank you very much for um, very good practical advice, life hack, I would say. I think it's um, very good, um, something to, to take with you, uh, young people. Uh, as you're approaching all those celebrations, New Year's, etc. So remember how you can diplomatically avoid conflicts and uh, unwanted situations, unwanted tension. Um, Marichka, you have your next question. Can we do one, two, three? One, two, three. Perfect. You're on. Okay. Uh, so how and when did your excellency realize the profoundness of the nativity and experience is to its fullest astuteness? Uh, each, each year is a new time. Thank you for your question. Uh, how, how do any of us uh, grow in the awareness of the profoundness of the moment. So whether it's nativity, what does it mean to be like Jesus? I mean, some, some moments where uh, we know in scripture for a little while, you made them lower than the angels. And uh, I think when the angels look at us, even though we think they're really cool with wings and whatever, uh, they look at us and they go, oh my gosh, you guys are so like Jesus. We are not the same way you are like Jesus. Jesus was a human being. Jesus was a human being. Um, so that is, is a different way that I came to the profoundness, I think, and awareness of, of the nativity. Um, I've done it in university when I would study Christology. And we would study Christ was completely human, not just portly, partially, but completely with, without sin. But he got frustrated. He had an ego. He had sexual uh, urges. He had frustration. He had all those things, anger, uh, a mind, a soul, a heart, everything like us. Yet he never sinned. He was perfectly whole. He always kept them in balance. He realized what each part of he, who he was was for and why it was there and how to use your wisdom, your patience, when to, when to show, you know, 
Force when not to show force, when to forgive, when to show wisdom, when to be quiet. He, he defended people from Sadducees, from being condemned, from being stoned. And yet when he was there standing by Pilate, in God's wisdom, he did his will. He was silent before those who accused him. He didn't defend himself. We, we need this wisdom. And so it's about awareness. It's about growing into it. So don't ever think you're finished meditating on something. Don't ever think you're finished. You know, uh, sit down and talk to different people throughout our rich religious history about it. So God wants to help you understand the importance of Christmas. Go sit down and, and speak with Siti Mikolai. Go sit down and speak with Siti Yosafat, Abu Yosafata. Go and speak about it and, and ask, what am I supposed to get from this? Go speak to one of the shepherds. They call this the sort of Ignatian or Jesuit way of prayer. Go put yourself right at the nativity scene and have a conversation with the kings. Where have you come from? Da, 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 da. You don't know. What's this mean to you? Why did you go through all of this? Have a conversation with the shepherd. Why, why do you think the angels came to you guys? You know, and it helps you appreciate so many aspects of the incarnation that maybe at first you didn't realize. But I like to go in prayer and have conversations with other people about the event because I'm sort of stagnant. I've stopped, you know, the same old thing, routine, routine, routine. I say all the same things, you know. Um, that's... That's why I, I, I shared the, that, that, that little, you know, um, you know, I want to dance about this wonderful thing, this wonderful, I want to sing and dance about it. And, and, the, and the carols are very deep and prayerful and meditative and profound. And so I didn't want to, to lose those words. There's a profound, profound reality, but I want to dance to it. I want to kick up my heels. <laughs> That's why I did that, you know. So each each year we, we try and, and uh, appreciate it, become aware of more of it uh, bit by bit. Thank you, Your Excellency. Father Ivan, would you like to add something to uh, Bishop's words? Uh, for me, the profoundness of Christmas is uh, the family part of it. Um, one lesson I learned from my dad, he's passed away for almost 30 years. And he says, uh, I so there's a bunch of us sons in our family. And he would say, as you grow up, if you can only come home once a year, that come home on Christmas Eve. So for him, that was so important that Christmas Eve was the only time of the year that that's come home then, because that's what Christmas is about, about family. And then the second thought I have is, um, as a priest, I lived far away from where my, uh, my family was uh, for the first years of my priesthood. So I had young kids and Debbie and the kids always went to Saskatoon far away to have Christmas with family. And I would stay behind to do the church services for Christmas Eve. And then I would arrive the next day. So. Um, it's all about giving of yourself. So I love the, um, the superhero, the one that's called self-giving. That was my favorite one because even though I know that Christmas is about family, I gave up my Christmases for the first 25 years so that I could be with my parishioners. Um, so self-giving. Wow. Thank Thanks, Marika. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Your Excellency. Um, and the last question that we have is from Anna. Anna, can we do one, two, three? One, two, three. Excellent. You're on. Okay. Um, so since we were talking about memories, my question is, what is your earliest Christmas memory? 
Your Excellency? That's a, that, that is a very good one. I think probably, um, I mean, there were obviously other Christmas memories to this, but the, the, I'm thinking of the more profound one. I remember being uh, probably a five-year-old altar boy and seeing this big bishop and seeing all these priests and all these other altar boys and we stood and it was long and I was bored and I was tired and I wanted to go home. <laughs> it was, it was uh, uh, the divine liturgy and um, I was just tired. I was just tired. I wanted to go home <laughs> and sleep because it was midnight. It was one in the morning and I don't know whatever. So that is one of the earliest as a little tiny little boy uh, that I have. It's not that I opened up a present or something that I really wanted or something like that. It was it was at Divine Liturgy. And I know they're going to talk all in Ukrainian and celebrate in Ukrainian and I don't understand it. And, <laughs> you know, like, you know, you know what it is to be a foreigner and you're in a situation you don't understand what they're doing, what they're saying, why they're doing it. And I'm just tired. <laughs> That's one of my earliest ones. Not not a great one, a fantastic one, but it is one of my earliest ones. Thank you, Your Excellency. Father, what about you? Well, I'm going to turn it back to Anna. Um, my earliest memory um, is equally as important as yours. So can you share us what your earliest memory of Christmas is, Anna? Unexpected turn of the event. Ooh. Um, question with a question. <laughs> about it. Give me a second. So if I was with all of you one at a time, I would love to hear each one of your answers. Uh, we obviously can't do that in just two hours with 26 people, but I want your, to hear your Magnificat. I want to hear your Magnificat. Sure. Um, so my great grandmother, um, her name was Rose. Um, she had this small, very small house and our family was like, it's very big because my mom has a bunch of siblings and then um, like siblings of my gra uh, grandparents too. So we all uh, were all together in this small house and the room was so tiny, but the table was like stretched out from the beginning till the end. And we all were sitting like squished together. Um, and all I remember, I was sitting on someone's laps every time because they didn't have a chair for me. Um, so basically, I think that's the first memory. But then after that, when my great grandmother died, we moved to our um, grandma's house and it was like bigger and better. But still, like I still had that memory of us being all together. Um, sitting at that like huge table with a bunch of food, but we were all like squished together. So that's all I remember. Okay, now I'll share mine because it's very similar at my Baba and Dido's house. And the table was so big that, and the house was so small that you would have to get, you'd have to kind of slide into your place with the wall at your back and the table at your front. And then if somebody, once the whole place would fill up, if somebody at the end had to go to the bathroom, everybody had to get up so that that one person could go. And, uh, it, and I was always on somebody's lap because there's not enough chairs. So me and Anna, we're the same. Make it three. <laughs> Thank you very much, Father. Thank you, Your Excellency. Anna, thank you so much for brightening it up. Um, so at this point, I don't see any messages uh, in our chat group. So I assume we have exhausted our questions. Um, and just to do um, a little musical intermezzo, as you know, part of our Ukrainian tradition is obviously caroling. So we have decided to um, do it bilingual. Uh, English and Ukrainian. And guess what Carol have we voted for? Any guesses? No? 
everyone knows. Oh, probably, okay. except, probably except for Father Ivan. <laughs> okay, all right, so it's Silent Night. Uh, and we have asked Bishop Brian to bring his guitar because uh, among many, many talents that uh, Bishop Brian has, music definitely holds a um, very important place. So um, I've, uh, what I've, I took a liberty of preparing a bilingual uh, cheat sheet for us. Can everybody see lyrics on the screen? Okay, so we will do um, two in English, one in Ukrainian so that everybody feels comfortable and uh, included. And um, your excellency, obviously you're going to be our choir master, <laughs> conductor. So, um, uh, given the, the situation we are on Zoom, uh, I don't know that I want to be the only person singing. Everybody, just like at prayer, should mute their mics and sing at home along with it. But I think there should be a small choir. So someone has to choose who is going to actually be unmuted and sing along with the guitar and lead us. Because I will play the guitar, but someone should lead in the singing. So uh, this is, uh, someone must make this decision. You can take that, that responsibility and choose maybe six people who would be in the choir with uh, Mr. Brian. Is it better? Is it better if I pick it like this because the strumming will be too loud? Can you hear this okay? Yeah. May I pick up from uh, Saskatoon group and from Sambir if Sambir uh, is, it, is okay with this? Uh, okay, from, Sask uh, from Saskatoon group, uh, please Anna join, and Sophia, and from um, uh, Samber group, uh, I would like to hear Oleg and Natalia. Okay, uh, if I... <laughs> okay. I, I, may I ask uh, brother Igor Liebersbach? And uh, Sofia Kudrich. Uh, and so we're just going to test five or six seconds to see how it works because we don't want to torture people for three minutes <laughs> if it doesn't sound right. <laughs> Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so in heavenly peace in heavenly peace are we okay with the sound levels there krishmo tikhani svyatani Oi, zitri, sviose, uvid, bo, sin, bože, ide do nas, cilej svit, ljubovju spas, vitaj nam, sjati di, Silent night, holy night, Son of God, old love's true night, radiant beams from 
from thy holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy Thank you to the choir. <laughs> um, well, so we're slowly moving to the second part of our gathering when it's going to be a give back from our youth. When we uh, designed this, this gathering, we assigned each group with the task to prepare a presentation of Christmas through the eyes of young people. And each group has their own presentation that deals with various aspects of Christmas from their hearts and through their eyes. So I would like to first call upon uh, ESL Youth Ministers, um, and you have an access to the screen, to share with us their presentation. Uh, we did it from the most general to the most local and specific. So Shaha goes first. Nayika, you're on. Yeah, I'm on. Can you hear me? One, two, three, four, five. Excellent. Great. Perfect. And we can see that the screen as well. Just a second. Yeah. Here you are. So let's start. Mary? Mm -hmm. So what is Christmas? Is it about presents? Maybe it's about a magical atmosphere or special food. For us, the magic of Christmas is not in presents, but in God's presence. Because the only gift that perfectly fits the size of every heart is Jesus. It's not what's under the Christmas tree that matters. It's who is inside of our hearts. It is Christmas in the heart that puts Christmas in the air. I'm so glad that for us, Christmas begins with Christ. We are not celebrating just a season, we are worshiping a savior. And all these things we are going to tell you about right now are just the way we do it. Fall Lenten dishes is one of the features of Ukrainian Holy Supper. Dishes may vary according to region, but I want to highlight the five the most important in my opinion. The first dish is kutya. I think this is the most important element of Christmas table. Kutya consists of ingredients such as wheat, poppy seeds, honey, nuts, and raisins. The second dish is dumplings, varenike. I think every Ukrainian loves this dish. For Christmas evening, my, my family prepare dumplings with potatoes, uh, but Ukrainian cuisine has many recipes for dish. For example, dumplings with cabbage, cheese, uh, apple, or uh, berries. Next dish is cabbage rolls. It's also very important and tasty dishes. Each family has own recipe for cooking. For instance, cabbage roll stuffing can be prepared with potatoes or rice with mushrooms. Another dish is borscht with ears. Of course, uh, words uh, ears is figurative. Ears is dumping <coughs> with mushrooms. Another, di uh, another dish is uh, stewed fruit is sweet broth. They are prepared from dried fruits, for example, apples, pears, cherries, and also from fresh fruit and berries. Yes, and uh, next thing is word um, The main thing is to uh, tell everyone about Christmas. And uh, you know story from Holy Bible about uh, Vertep, uh, about uh, Herod, yes, and another uh, characters. Uh, so uh, Vertep, um, first of all, uh, Vertep unite participants 
and um, we can take part of celebrating in different ways. It's not only learn your role very well, but also you have to create holiday clothes and become a direct participant. Uh, in our parish, we have good tradition. Uh, we prepare with children and young people a traveling vertep uh, when at about 20 people um, traveling from house to house and uh, show our traveling vertep in uh, different houses uh, for all of people who invite us. Yes. And, um, the last thing as I want to say, uh, our Vertep is, uh, has a lot of uh, traditional characters. Uh, you don't know maybe some of them like um, Zhid, Zhidivka, uh, it's Hebrew. Um, чи, можливо, якісь там ну, українські національні герої, like Kozak or another characters. And um, in my opinion, um, more than seven years, I played only one role. I was as Zhid or Hebrew, and my, uh, my priest always um, say for me, you, um, the main it's um, you say you should to play your role only on vertep, not only your life, <laughs> because you just uh, want to remember that Christ uh, should uh, to born in your heart. Thank you. Hi everybody. One, two, three. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, okay, today I'm going to represent uh, um, our topic uh, that is Christmas in the East. Uh, I have chosen it because I'm working in the military high school. So, and uh, today, you know, that East, uh, it's um, uh, only the metaphor because for the last uh, six years, uh, it means the battlefield. Uh, yes. And uh, uh, so we would like to show you how our soldiers, while celebrating Christmas, uh, defend our motherland uh, from the the enemy. So uh, I would like to uh, represent to you the, uh, to highlight that they haven't got a possibility to celebrate uh, Christmas and, and to follow and catch with all the traditions, uh, uh, but our chaplains and seminarists and priests uh, help them to feel that Christmas spirit and bring them a part of their native home with this celebration. And uh, of course, the main holy dish here in this photo, you can see our priests and seminarists, they came to our warriors and brought them the main dish, kutya. And uh, it was cooked by themselves and uh, they cooked it and brought it uh, uh, to the East uh, by train. And uh, they, uh, this night uh, they visited 12 uh, blog posts, uh, checkpoints, uh, and uh, going from one checkpoint to another, they gave this dish and celebrated Christmas with the soldiers and greeted them. It was real support and uh, God's protection. And uh, this uh, holy mission, and Father Andrew uh, told us that this mission uh, had been very successful and inspiring. Left when, uh, when they left uh, to the 10th uh, checkpoint, uh, they heard shooting. So it was Christmas and uh, it was like a Christmas under the bullets. Soldiers were so happy to see the chaplains and they admitted that only few people visit them because of constant shooting. And uh, they had the holy liturgy, they sang carols, uh, they uh, blessed uh, our defenders, uh, and uh, it was amazing. Uh, they uh, showed their greetings, uh, our warriors showed uh, our, their greetings and hospitality. Uh, well, here you can see Vertep, uh, among everything um, uh, they do in, in, uh, during their military mission, uh, they try to fill Christmas with joy and traditions. Um, and uh, in this picture you can uh, see our warriors acting Vertep and trying to forget about the place where they were then and escape from the war. I was deeply impressed by this picture where they are near the tank and uh, we understand it, that it is really Christmas during the war. And, uh, but uh, uh, that God and uh, 
uh, we, we we can understand to hear that God and Christmas are, is is in their soul and uh, uh, they are filled with hope and love. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Everyone, uh, Christmas for Ukrainians is a very special holiday that uh, unites people. Therefore, in Ukraine, in each city, uh, uh, there are different festive events. For example, in many cities, schools, uh, different organizations, uh, Christmas fairs are held. This fair can be both charitable and to entertain people to create a festive atmosphere. At these fairs, uh, people sell handmade items and food. There are also many festivals at Christmas time in which uh, bands and organizations from all over Ukraine take part. But uh, the most important thing uh, that unites uh, at this time are people who are ready to share Christmas traditions, who help to feel the warmth uh, of this holiday. Thank you. Christmas camps. Uh, Shaha organizes Christian, Christian camps for children, especially during Christmas time we have the joyful new of Jesus' birth with dozens of children. We share this joyful view. Thank you for your attention and Merry Christmas. Thank you so very much, ESL Youth Ministers, School and Home Christianskich Animatorio. Uh, it's a great start to uh, our presentations, and um, it's wonderful that you have remembered to include people, our, war, our soldiers on the east outposts of our country, especially at this turbulent time for Ukraine. And at this point, I would like to pass uh, the floor to Sambia. Um, we are going to move to a local atmosphere of Ukrainian Christmas. So Olenka, you're on. Can we do one, two, three? One, two, three. Excellent. You're on. Perfect. So um, first of all, we'd like to try this. Okay. Well, um, you heard that we are Sambir, we are Ukraine, but who we actually are. So uh, we are courses for future Christian animators. Uh, here is our logo. We are located in Sambir. Sambir, it is a small town in the region, in the west part of Ukraine. And uh, what is that? Who are we and uh, where can you find us? Well, in fact, there were seven people who wanted to change the world. You can see all of us. And we saw the potential of, of our hometown and hundreds of walking people around, especially yours. One day we decided to start unpredictable project. It was a day in, uh, um, I don't know, maybe it was after Christmas uh, in January, 2018. And it's la it lasts till this moment. So all these young people, they are animators. And uh, what are we doing? We organize events and holidays. We organize camps for children every summer. We study together. Uh, even during this, uh, this crazy time. And uh, actually, what is Christmas for us? How do we celebrate Christmas? Um, would like to pass the next turn. So every year we celebrate our Christmas in a unique way. And um, you may think that it sounds like a cliche, but in real life, it looks so majestic. Um, first of all, we celebrate together. We realize that our Christ came into the world to save us and the darkness is feared. Uh, so he saved us, can you imagine that? And we are praising him and making him feel celebrated. And we believe that he, he, that he can hear us and he actually does. 
To begin with, on January 6th, after the Holy Supper with our parents, uh, we, uh, our parents can believe that after it, we are leaving the family circle because we just can't go a day without seeing each other and especially when other Christ is between us. In addition, we are having the great complaint. It goes without saying that other prayers aspire him and we do our best to make them long and thoughtful, especially the day before the nativity of our Christ. So let's get started. You never heard anybody to celebrate Christmas this way. So as uh, 12 a.m. comes, uh, our youth gather in a meeting hall at the church and the best part of it is when everybody uh, brings one of the 12 meatless dishes and put them on the holiday table. Trust me, it looks so flavorful and it makes our mouths water. So of course we won't see the lack of um, smiling people at the table and the lack of dumplings and donuts on the table. In a great traditionally nativity sense and carolers are considered as social of gladness, happiness and peace. It worth saying that uh, Christmas is a holiday where all members of the family in our community we consider each other brother and sister uh, in Christ. We gather together and come up with a new modern history for our nativity, which is close to modern problems such as, for example, ecology. Um, the main purpose of our annual nativity scenes is to convey the preaching of birth of the Jesus Christ, uh, to bring the glorious news and to draw people's attention to important problems of nowadays. Um, during preparation for the nativity scene, our community youth have the opportunity to fully experience the spirit of Christmas from the inside. In our nativity scene, we have traditional characters such as Joseph, Mary, shepherds, uh, angels, uh, kings, uh, deaths, uh, and heroes. However, um, as we tend to draw public, in public attention uh, to hot topics, so we have added uh, new characters such as uh, fashion and comfort uh, to convey people that fashion is fleeting and comfort is temporary. Uh, in our native scene, uh, Hero says, yes, people destroy nature, overuse natural resources, litter caves, so that the newborn Jesus is drowned in garbage and I don't have to look for and kill him. Comfort and fashion also promotes this. People chase of fashion and comfort buy things they don't use, kill animals for fur and destroy rare um, plant species. In this way, we show the coming of Christ into the real world, thus giving people a reflection on what Christ would say about our modern way of, of life. We dress in appropriate costumes because it gives a special atmosphere and gives the opportunity to fully experience the Christmas spirit. We sing a lot of carols and wish the hosts all the best. Uh, our youth organized uh, caroling and nativity scenes to raise funds for the construction of our church, future youth projects and camps. Uh, we believe that in this way, we revive Ukrainian traditions. We would like to finish our presentation with a short video, but uh, we need to send it in the in a chat, and so you can um, you can watch it in the YouTube. So it is really uh, for I think one minute to uh, see to watch that. How is it in a practice with smiling faces with everyone, and we are also in this video, so please check it. Olenka, did you send it? I don't have it. Uh, there is no link so far. Um, the most important thing right now is so that everybody goes mute um, wh while we are watching. So the link has appeared. Please mute yourself and um, 
enjoy the, the video. I hope everyone enjoyed it. So please don't think that we are uh, mad or we are crazy. It's just uh, um, how, how do we celebrate it and our nativity scene and our carols in a, in a practice, in a practical way. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Olenka. Thank you, Sambir. Great job. Thank you for an entertaining video. It was awesome. Um, so now we leave um, Ukraine and we transport ourselves to the realm of Saskatchewan. So we are traveling all the way to Canada, the land of freezing snow and white beds. It's a magnificent country. So I would like to pass the, the microphone to Victoria. Victoria, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, uh, so um, our presentation is the video. Uh, do you see it? Does everyone see? Okay, good. Ready? <laughs> Victoria, I believe we have a problem with sound. We can't hear very well. And I think um, people are experiencing the same uh, technical glitch. That's correct. I think that's because she muted herself halfway through. So maybe if she's unmuted, maybe that will work. OK, uh, try, try unmuting yourself. Um, and maybe we, we will hear the sound. Okay, let's check, okay? It celebrates Christmas in its unique... Do you hear? Yes. Okay, so uh, I will start from here, okay? Okay. <laughs> Christmas, 
Canada is a very large country and is unbelievably wealthy in nationalities. Canada opened her doors wide, and thus it is here that many people found their home without losing their identity. Canadians treasure different religions, speak different languages, and have infinitely rich and deep traditions. It is lovely to see how each nationality celebrates Christmas in its unique way. As everyone prepares themselves for something majestic, it's indeed very special. It is the mood in the air that changes ordinary into exotic. Everything becomes so charming, so mysterious. It seems that Canada, for a moment, is turning into a wondrous Christmas tree decorated with various unique and original ornaments. Each one is so special, beautiful, and flawless, with each hanging in its own place. And, truth be told, without even one of the ornaments, the tree would lose its beauty, uniqueness, and richness. Our Aparheel Christmas tree is decorated with Christmas ornaments, so let them share with you their celebration. On Christmas, my family starts off the day with a big breakfast. After that, we open presents and play. Later on in the day, me and my family get together and talk about Jesus. As Roman Catholics, we understand the true meaning of Christmas. That it is not about presents, but about getting together as a family and giving thanks to God for sending the Savior of the world down to earth on this day. My family moved to Canada four years ago. In Canada, we celebrate Christmas like we used to celebrate it in Ukraine, but we don't have any Canadian traditions included yet. Something that we don't do anymore, but used to do when we were kids, is believing superstitions and such traditions as tapping spoons outside or blowing a candle. We don't do this anymore. We also don't put a plate on the Christmas table for ancestors. We only pray for them. Unfortunately, it is difficult to find some hay in our city, but it would be very nice if we could put it underneath the table and hide some sweet treats in there for my brother and sister. Also, my mom likes to bake gingerbread and give it to other people as gifts. For our first Christmas Eve in Canada, we visited a very nice big family for whom we also caroled. This family helped us very much when we just immigrated. Do you guys remember how last year we staged the first youth Vertep in our church? It was so much fun. To be honest, I think this Vertep brought us all closer together and created such a nice youth group. As a Ruthenian family, me and my family sit around the fireplace in a circle and carol all night long. We usually just we have borscht, and then as dessert we have bobanki, which is basically kutya, but with bigger balls of dough and with poppy seeds and honey. As to my family, we celebrate Christmas on December 24th. We go to Saints Peter and Paul Church and then come home for supper. We eat the 12 dishes, all by dessert. Afterwards, together we clean up and gather in the living room to open the presents. My favorite part about Christmas is the food, also spending time with my family since I don't get to see them that often. For Christmas, my family and I celebrate by going caroling to family friends' house on Christmas Eve. We have supper at 5 and then spend the rest of the time caroling and then have a liturgy at 10 p.m. For supper we have fish and rice and get all dressed up for caroling. I always remember how cold it was going in and out of the car and how my cousins and I would just listen to Christmas music in the car and complain about the cold. For our Ukrainian Orthodox Christmas Eve, me and my parents fast for the whole day leading up to the supper. My mom and dad prepare food, kutya, varaniki with cabbages, mushroom sauce, and so on. I help them. Then around six, my siblings and I carol for my parents. We gather around the table and pray by kneeling. Every person in the family has to take one spoon or more of kutya before eating anything else. When we are finished with the food, we pray. Then, at around 10, we go to a night service at church. The next morning, my dad takes me and my brothers caroling to Ukrainian people's houses. Thank you for listening to this Friday to Market. So, where 
Usually on the days we gather at church, read the Bible, sometimes we have play songs and poems. During the Christmas season, Canada decorates her land with pure white snow, which adds mystery to our Christmas spirit. We all become small children again, together, having fun in the snow. in the world. circle. While your way of celebrating Christmas may change with time, the feeling of belonging, love, and warmth between family members and friends given by the baby Jesus is what will never change. But what about those who are left alone on the streets, who may have forgotten or are not even familiar with the warmth of family gatherings, excitement of opening the presents, and the taste of Christmas food? Jesus also experienced homelessness at Christmas, and thus we experience a love we can never lose. This is the love that can be shared with the community, with the poor, the homeless, and strangers. This Christmas, may you experience a true Christmas by being surrounded by your loved ones, by creating special memories, and most of all, may you have the courage to change people's lives by giving the greatest gift of all. so much it was a great video i think everybody enjoyed it 
profoundly um, and to me personally it brought memories of Canada that I oftentimes miss. Um, uh, well, every good thing comes to an end, unfortunately, and this gathering is slowly wrapping itself up as well. We have uh, one very special surprise from Bishop Brian. He has been very generous today with us uh, with his time and gifts. And he has prepared a musical surprise for us, um, which he shared, I'm not sure if with everyone, but with some people, definitely. So Bishop Brian, why don't you say a couple of words about the inspiration that you've received to produce this great piece of art? Uh, and why don't you perform it for us? It's best probably if uh, you can share the screen with me or share the hosting and then I can play it. You can. You, uh, you have the ability to share a screen. Okay. I just want to go back to this here. Check the chat off. Um, it, it doesn't say that I do, but let's see. Okay. I'll make you. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. It's good. So uh, let me just share this way so you can see all of my stuff here. <laughs> and I'll do it on GarageBand. And let's see if I can pull up my songs. Let's rejoice Virgin Mary. Uh, here we go. There's the words. <clears throat> so like I said, um, the reason I uh, did this one is, is uh, there is a profound, deep, meditative portion to understanding Christmas uh, that is very essential. But at the same time, um, you know, at, at least for us extroverts, we want to do something crazy about Christmas because uh, we don't know how to contain our joy. <laughs> so uh, I wanted something that was uh, uh, vibrant and uh, that we could uh, dance to in the room. Um, and I added some words like Ismari Voplateusia because it rhymes with Narodeusia and same thing here and here. So those are some technical things I did. And Zaspivaimo Povtoriaimo. Uh, I added those things, but the rest of it is pretty much, you know, book for the as you've always learned it. Um, I've, I've played it for lots of people and some uh, really are homestickers for the traditional way. That's okay. Uh, I love book for the as I always learned it, but this is for, for those who, who want a, a little bit of a different version of it. So uh, I'm going to have to take back this screen share just for one second because when you go to screen share, you got to share the sound. Okay. So I'm just going to play a little bit, a big three seconds to make sure that everybody can hear it. Okay, so let's try this. Oops. Can you hear it okay? Yeah, 
Христос наш и Бог наш для всех нас, для всех нас на народе Вечер тому, хто є домі цьому старому малому господареві тому, дай Боже мир, добре святкувати, а на рік ще краще, як святок вам діждати, Христос рождається. So that's where you put your vinshuvanya during this part here, the choir who's singing it, takes it down, and then you do your little greetings and whatever else like this. today uh, with your mission and with especially with this song that is I think so catchy that you, this version of our carol that I think a lot of uh, may, may, our young people will catch it up and pass it on. Um, so at this point uh, before we actually conclude and ask Bishop Brand to impart his blessing on us I would like to um, extend words of my gratitude to all of you um, that you have decided to join this gathering. It's always hard to, to organize something for the very first time because you don't know what response you might get from people. But you've been awesome. And um, the presentations, the spirit, the joy that, that you've shared today is so tremendous, so spe special to, to all of us. Uh, and the bridge that we have built today is not so much a, a bridge between two countries, but a bridge between hearts. Um, that are burning with love for, for God, love for um, his work to be continued in this world. Uh, and I couldn't be more proud of all of you that being young people in this secular, turbulent world, you choose the right path to follow in, in, your, in your life. Um, my special thanks to the so-called organizational committee that um, worked uh, on making this event happen. Um, Victoria, Olenka, Marichka, Nadia, um, and all those that I might have forgotten. A huge big thank you to, to you for making this event happen, for dedicating your time uh, on several meetings, um, uh, bringing your ideas, uh, perfecting the idea to what we have had today. And I hope it's not going to be the last gathering um, that, that we, we've had. And obviously, huge thank you to Bishop Brian and Father Ivan for sharing um, their, their words. Uh, Bishop Brian, thank you for um, finding time and your absolutely crazy busy schedule to spend those two hours with, with us. We know that the, the time, time is very valuable and we appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts. Um, I, I am pretty sure that you've ignited this Christmas spirit and the hearts of those young people. And I think we are all now tuned in um, and focus on what is in this celebration. Um, 
at this point, if anybody has any comments before Bishop Brian concludes it with prayer, any comments, questions, suggestions, uh, please share. Let's do it a five minute thing, Victoria. Okay, I will take the courage uh, on behalf of young people of Sambir and on behalf of young people that belong to Shaha uh, to say thank you to you, Irena, for your initiative and for your time, for your efforts, for making this happen. And I know that you are going through not an easy time, uh, but we pray to God for you. So he grants you as good health with and inspire you for many, many other wonderful projects. And please remember that we are open and it's our first time, but not the last one. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Victoria. It's been honestly a great pleasure uh, for me, despite some, some personal issues. Um, and I know that you don't know it, but Victoria and I already have something new in our pocket. Uh, that obviously will not let you go. We, we are trying to keep you on, um, basically to work with us and to serve God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as soon as we receive blessing from Bishop Brian, the news will become official. Uh, so stay tuned, stay, um, stay in touch, Victoria. I'm just thinking maybe I'm running too fast, but I think if everyone is here and Bishop Brian is here, uh, what if you just share this poster and give us, like, explain briefly so everyone could start could start th thinking about it. Um, and is that Brian okay as well. Uh, Your Excellency, is that okay with you? Uh, you can share it. I don't know what it is, and I, I don't know if I, I, I have to bless it, but uh, you can certainly share it. <laughs> No, we are not waiting for your blessing. Uh, we will give time to think about it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and then we, we can discuss it. Bear with me, I have to, um, yeah, there it is. Uh, I'll try to open it. Um, my computer is not necessarily cooperating with me these days, so for some reason it's, Okay, um, I don't think you can sh you can see it. Can you see it? No. Okay, hold on a minute. Uh, now? No. Okay, L let me do it again. Now? Yes. Can you see yes. it? Um, okay. Um, so, as you know, um, Shacha is about combining teaching English uh, with evangelization. Okay. So, our, our camps are obviously focused on Jesus, on his teaching. Plus, we also um, bring an opportunity to children in Ukraine to learn English, to master their English skills. And um, one of our missions is to take care of those less fortunate. Um, as you know, there are a lot of children and young people in Ukraine who unfortunately do not have an opportunity to have English tutoring or attend uh, paid courses. So um, here is an opportunity uh, for you to join this noble cause because we would like to initiate um, and enter a park hill project ESL peer tutoring. Um, we are looking for people who, like you, who are willing to spend one hour a week on helping those less fortunate kids in Ukraine to master their English because there were, believe me, a lot of, of children, um, like even from, from um, large families or orf orphanages who do need such assistance and they are willing, willing to learn. So um, we have been thinking, uh, discussing this with Victoria and wanted to present it to Bishop Brian. Um, here, our local Bishop Andri uh, is very much interested in uh, joining or even supporting this project. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to think about uh, utilizing your free time in a very generous way. 
um, again, we we didn't want to make it public until Bishop Brand um, blesses it and agrees to it. But this, we are just laying the cards open to you. And um, um, if you are willing to join the team, oh wow, <laughs> the deal is sealed. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, I'm gonna call it. <laughs> Um, so this is something that that um, I think is worth pursuing, and again building another bridge um, with um, between two countries, and most most of all between the hearts of of people. Um, we haven't circulated this just yet. Um, again, it's fresh fresh from print. Uh, we finalized with Victoria last night, so you're basically the first viewers of this initiative and. Uh, if um, if this is something that you would like to contribute to, then uh, please contact Victoria in, in Canada. And um, obviously, I will spread the news here in the USA. Um, so thank you so very much. Christmas surprise number two today. Um, thank you so much. Uh, so at this point, anybody else wants to share some something, some comments, thoughts, ideas? before I pass um, the floor to Bishop Brian for concluding prayer and blessing. No, okay, Bishop Brian. Okay, um, I'm, I'm, I'm also going to uh, ask Father Ivan to join me if he wishes uh, in, in uh, uh, with the closing prayer uh, as I give the blessing. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, you are full of mystery. You are full of surprises. Uh, you bring us joy and you give us gifts. Some of them we don't understand. Some of them build character. Some of them call us to forgive. Some of the situations and gifts you give us help us know that you are walking with us through suffering. And yet you are there to embrace us in times of joy as well. This is so wonderful that you are everywhere and you fill all things. Fill our hearts with joy and gladness. Give us the strength to continue when we find challenges, especially during this season. May we always be Jesus for the person who needs to see him. May we call on the mother of God to give us the strength and the grace because she always brings Jesus to everyone. And may we do likewise. May we bring Christ to everyone we meet. And may our Lord God uh, fill the Holy, with the Holy Spirit to Father Ivan as he shares his thoughts during this prayer. Christ our God. <clears throat> We bring gifts of ourselves to you this Christmas, even though they might not be wrapped beautifully, even, not, even though they might be a little bit used. We bring, yourself, we bring ourselves to you and we ask you to give us an opportunity for confession. We ask you to bless our families, bless this COVID world, Bless the distance and the loneliness that some might experience because of different countries, different provinces, different abilities to gather or not to gather. We give ourselves to you that you might do with us what you will. Amen. So as a batko, I blow a kiss to all of you. <laughs> and in my office as bishop, I call the Holy Spirit upon all of you to bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, um, 
as I said before, time to say goodbye is not easy, but um, I would say until next time, you have yourself a merry, blessed Christmas, and a happy, healthy new year, which I hope will bring us a chance to meet again and meet more often. Um, so thank you so much for participating and uh, blessings and big love to all of you. Thank you.